All right, uh, we're back. I hope everybody is uh, back as well. <clears throat> All right, great. So uh, let's assume. <clears throat> so here is another example of research. In this case, in fact, you know, uh, some company has done research on the same point that we're talking about. How often? How often do other people create research, right? So, uh, oops, come on, why am I scrolling? So here's this article. Copy this. I'm back. All right. So this article here is this is the you know research, and then uh, this article has been linked uh, by some other uh, website over here. So just to give an example of how a lot of these other other sites start linking to uh, you know other research-based content because that is even more uh, useful <clears throat> and you can see that uh, and to answer this question uh, how has your uh, has your marketing team created and published original research total average is uh, it's actually pretty decent 47 I expected this to be much less given uh, the experience which I had with people but uh, apparently there, there are quite a few especially in the B2B industry uh, B2B actually it makes sense B2C not so much, 35 and uh, combined they have about uh, 40%. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that's that's the market stat out here. I think this is still uh, very low for most companies uh, based out of India at least. Okay, uh, so most companies that I have interacted with, they are typically interested in you know uh, taking up a keyword, finding existing articles, and rewriting them. This is a typical mindset which I've seen everywhere, and such content does not. Uh, give you any benefits at all you know this this kind of a content uh, is, is is just a namesake content marketing you know this this content is not helping you so people think that you know quantity uh, a quantity overtakes quality that's not true in case of content marketing you know uh, the major goal I've seen with companies like you know this year we have to publish 5,000 pieces of content okay but if you do that you're focusing on on quality uh, on quantity not on the quality uh, on, the, on the quality I would much rather focus on just just two articles a month provided they're absolutely good high quality not I'm not saying that every single article has to be a uh, research based no but at least uh, you know uh, keep a spot for them at least like, you know once in every quarter or if possible if you have enough resources do it once at least every month because that is the kind of content that attracts shares backlinks traffic and that increases your overall site authority again that will depend on the kind of resources that you have but make that a part of your uh, content strategy do not take shortcuts by simply writing uh, blog stuff which everybody else has written you know because uh, these shortcuts are uh, you know uh, uh, they take too long you know they, they they won't give you ranking they won't give you the, the benefit that is intended out of it if you want quick immediate not immediate but uh, relatively fast uh, benefits yes it will take effort but the uh, but the benefits are uh, commensurate with that they give you uh, uh, benefits in the same proportion okay so now we talked about topics the next thing I'm going to talk about is the format this will be a short discussion we just want to uh, touch upon the different formats of content that you can uh, uh, write about and I made this clear in the beginning most people when they think of content marketing they just think it of uh, think of it as uh, text <clears throat> but that's not true and once again, uh, the actual course uh, in content marketing in your digital marketing classes, digital marketing module, we'll talk about formats in a bit more detail. Uh, that was also a module which I created. So, uh, uh, you know, it kind of, uh, <clears throat> this, this, this uh, PPT actually uh, uh, borrows some stuff from there and just touches upon them so that, uh, you know, together this and that other training will, uh, will make a, a lot more sense to you. <clears throat> and doesn't matter if you haven't done it yet, uh, it will make sense when you, uh, when that module comes up for you, okay? So uh, talk about formats. <clears throat> now, a content can be classified as great when it has, uh, when it meets two different criteria. One, it's interesting. And second, it's useful. Okay. So the, the two characteristics of a, of a great content are uh, the fact that it's interesting and it's, uh, you know, useful. So uh, one such type of a content which is extremely helpful, extremely useful, is an infographic okay again these are, these are different types of uh, uh, content formats I'm talking about so besides text one thing that works very well with people is uh, uh, you know is our, our infographics I hope everybody knows what infographics are <clears throat> okay all of you do excellent <clears throat> 
So infographics, you know, as I say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, these are, uh, you know, uh, pieces of articles that, that are interesting, that uh, generate lots of backlinks. Uh, people love to share infographics because they, uh, they look cool. And if done right, infographics uh, are visually very, uh, very uh, pleasing. People love to share them because, you know, it's easy to consume a lot of information in a very short time. You don't have to read through, you know, uh, chunks and chunks of text. You can simply uh, focus on the important stuff. Like, you know, 20% of women will consider uh, purchasing products supported by influencers. By the way, this is an infographic on influencer marketing. And this is uh, yet another very important uh, you know, aspect of your marketing. I did conduct a session on influencer marketing as well. It, it should be somewhere in the in your LMS. You can check that out later on. So what brands are saying about influencers, all of this information is right here. And this kind of content also gets a lot of a uh, lot of shares. Okay. So uh, this I, I believe is the is the is the one of these two links. Come on. One of these two links is the original infographic, and the other is some other site which has actually linked back to this. So when people share infographic, they again have to. Uh, link back to the original source and that is again something which creates uh, you know, a lot of backlinks. So while normal blogging content will not generate as much of backlinks, infographics uh, uh, have like you know 40% uh, more probability of generating a backlink as opposed uh, to a normal piece of text. Okay, so the different formats I'm going to talk about, uh, text still remains the core of uh, everything. It's still the the most common format in which you'll be creating your content, uh, articles, guides, and books. But beyond that, you have images uh, like infographics, diagrams, and memes, which have become very popular. By the way, somebody calls it uh, memes or uh, something else. It's not memes, it's memes. I, I don't know, for some reason, I see a lot of people pronouncing it uh, memes, which uh, kind of sounds funny, but it's memes. Uh, video, uh, again, how-to videos, explainers, uh, animations. How-to videos work excellent you have seen this already uh, <clears throat> you search on google for how to related stuff and a video is likely to pop up so uh, anything which requires a visual input like uh, how to play guitar oops not on youtube sorry what am i doing you know uh, i think my brain is really beginning to give up now <clears throat> because i haven't moved in front from in front of this pc since morning today how to play guitar and there you go. There's a video, right? So uh, if you can create uh, interesting, uh, high-quality videos like this, and again use the words like how to, what, and so on, this will, uh, you know, show to you. So how to uh, create a website. You'll either see a knowledge graph like this, or you'll see a video. In some cases, you'll see both of them. So here are some videos. Here are here's a knowledge graph. So all this content works very, very well. So if you want to make uh, use of, uh, you know, <clears throat> videos again on top of search engines. Try to pick up topics with what, how, <clears throat> what, how, and uh, create video content on it and uh, host it on YouTube. Uh, optimize it properly. Again, uh, there's a YouTube uh, seminar as well, which was conducted by, my, uh, conducted by me some time uh, ago. So you can uh, look at that to uh, figure out how to, uh, you know, uh, optimize your uh, videos on YouTube, how to uh, <clears throat> rank them on YouTube and on search engines. So uh, a lot of this content is obviously interrelated and I'm building upon lots of other stuff which has either been taught to you or will be taught to you. Okay, then you got collaborative content. This is powerful. This is where you talk about uh, influencer marketing and interviews and roundups. So let's look at uh, a few of them. Uh, video marketing is awesome. Uh, if a picture is worth a thousand words, what is a video worth? Uh, you know, you can think about it. Now, given that, uh, you know, a video is usually recorded at 24 frames per second. So technically speaking, you've got 24 images in one second. And each image is worth a thousand word. Uh, is, each image is worth a thousand words. So uh, it's literally like 24,000 words in every, uh, you know, uh, one twenty-fourth of a second. Now that's too much of a math. So that was just for fun. But yeah, uh, you know, uh, in the order of importance, there's, there's text. Better than that, you got images, and even better than that, you got uh, audio, and probably the best, you got uh, video content. Okay, so this is the content which actually uh, appeals a lot to people. Once again, ranks high, uh, gets a lot of shares, gets a lot of uh, backlinks, and uh, improves, your, improves your overall marketing performance. <clears throat> so this is something called the laws of uh, visual hierarchy. Uh, this is something that I teach in, uh, uh, you know, uh, UX UI development seminars. I've conducted a few of those, and this is uh, from that slide. 
So uh, there are some elements which have low visual prominence and some elements which have high visual prominence. So uh, small elements typically have low visual prominence, large ones have high visual prominence. Position typically if they are at the bottom, they're not seen that much. If they're at the top of the page, they are seen uh, easily. So the most important stuff of your website should be on the top of the page. And this is something we discussed in the last class, right? How to uh, design your headers with the kind of messaging. Uh, low contrast again has low visual uh, prominence. This one is has higher uh, you know con uh, prominence. Text images icons uh, versus those who have uh, movement uh, or video in it. So animations or video based content they have a high visual prominence. And uh, again position relative to other elements. If elements are crowded together they will not be seen easily. If elements have lots of extra white space around it they will be seen easily, right? So these are uh, the laws of uh, visual hierarchy. So try to create a content that focuses on these elements because they are they have a high visual prominence and they get they are uh, they register better in uh, uh, in the minds of people. Okay. <clears throat> Another way of uh, creating content is uh, called repurposing. Okay. Repurposing is. Uh, you take your existing pieces of content and convert it into something else, something even more meaningful. Okay, so for example, uh, you could take your blog post and convert it into your into a video. So pick up a top performing blog post. Let's say, uh, you know, uh, 10, 10, uh, uh, 10 uh, uh, top 10 health benefits of cycling, for example, or top 10, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, top 10 uh, habits of successful uh, digital marketers, for example and convert it into a video you know maybe you can create a presentation and record the whole presentation as a video format and or, or maybe just convert the blog post into a presentation and you can upload it on sites like uh, SlideShare and so on so basically taking your top performing existing content and then converting it into other forms of uh, content media like videos images infographics and so on or you can or you can just take a top performing blog post uh, read it, right? Uh, record uh, an audio out of it and you can use that as a podcast for example. Okay, there are tons of ways in which you can take your existing working content and get even more value out of it. Now you could take a blog post and convert it into an infographic. So 10 again, top 10 habits of uh, digital marketers, you create an infographic out of it. You know, images showing what are those 10 habits with little bits of text explaining what those are, right? Or you can do the opposite. You can take off Facebook post and convert into a newsletter or or you could take a video which is working well and convert into a blog post. So uh, content again uh, these are a lot of content ideas that you can generate just by taking your existing content and converting them into something which makes uh, 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 which is which is even more uh, interesting. Okay so here's the here's some kinds of uh, contents that uh, work in different uh, you know uh, fields. Uh, in the in on the for search uh, search engines for example if you're trying to create content which is optimized for search engines the content that typically works is uh, question and answer format so answer questions again those same things what when how why headlines with explicit benefits top 10 reasons uh, or top 10 reasons why some digital marketers excel okay or uh, you know uh, top 10 habits of content marketers so explicit benefits uh, Long and detailed, of course, they're going to be long and detailed. Uh, if you're writing a blog post, try and make sure that it is at least a thousand words because that kind of content seems to work very well. Uh, contributor quotes from experts include that. That will help, uh, you know, get a lot of mentions as well. I'll talk about contributions shortly. Uh, content that works in social media typically is something that triggers emotion. Like, you know, you will not believe X, Y, Z or which Harry Potter character are you? Uh, are you? Or, you know, or, uh, you know, what is your personality trait? You know, this, this triggers emotion or headlines with a curiosity gap, you know, something like, you know, uh, uh, 10 most dangerous places uh, on earth. You will not believe number two even exists, right? So you are creating curiosity out of it. And you've seen all those blog posts, right? And, and most likely you have even clicked on it because those, those blog posts, posts were like, you know, uh, were able to generate this curiosity within you. Compelling visuals, okay, that works very well in social media. Again, contributor quotes from social influencers. This is the kind of content that actually works in these two platforms. And you can, uh, again, include this into your content marketing uh, strategy or, uh, you know, content marketing calendar. <clears throat> right. So uh, hopefully uh, up to this part, everything is okay. All of you are comfortable with this.
<clears throat> All right, good. Uh, Tarun has a question. Digressing here, how does Google determine whether content is repurposed or copied? No, I'm not saying Google uh, determines how, uh, how uh, you know, it's repurposed. I'm saying how you can, uh, you know, uh, I'm not talking about ranking here. I'm talking about how you can use the same content to get even more uh, shares and links. So if you, uh, you know, there's a good high performing content, convert into different formats and you'll get even more benefits, right? So YouTube will start sending even more, uh, you know, uh, shares and uh, traffic sources to you. If you convert into infographic, more people will share it and you'll get even more benefits out of it, right? So these are just content ideas, how you can create more content. So sometimes when you're running out of ideas, take an existing piece of content, which, is, uh, which has worked well for you in the past and turn it into something else. All right, uh, make sense? All right. So next up is, uh, you know, influencers and uh, collaboration. Uh, once again, I've talked about influencers in depth in my influencer marketing class uh, seminar. So uh, that should have been uploaded to your, uh, <coughs> to your LMS. So make sure that you uh, read through that. <clears throat> but uh, it's a very clear, uh, you know, again, this is based uh, totally off, uh, you know, from, uh, with data. Bloggers who report strong results based on the type of promotion Influencer marketing definitely works the best. You know the the the, the best uh, result out of promotion. The, the 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 best promotional method has been influencer outreach. Once again, I've covered that in detail, so you can go with it. But uh, just a couple of quick points here: keywords and related phrases are used in your uh, content uh, for search engines, right? You use keywords in your uh, search uh, in your uh, content so that you can attract search engines. You can uh, get better rankings, but at the same time. If you use contributors, uh, you know, in your uh, in your uh, content, con the quotes from contributors and influencers, uh, you make your post optimized for social media as well. So keywords work for search engines, while uh, quotes from con contributors actually uh, help you optimize content for social media. So what I mean here is, like I said, once again, it's con it's covered in depth in the influencer marketing seminar. But ideally, when you when you when you create content, try to include. Uh, uh, a quote from you know uh, an influencer or uh, you know uh, from, from some somebody who's well known in this uh, in that particular field because what will then happen is once you publish the content you can reach out to that person and tell him that you know what we published this article on uh, xyz topic and uh, we quoted uh, you in this article feel free to share it with your readers okay now if this if if this person is an influencer most likely he has a big following right so if he likes the content and most influencers like the fact that uh, other sites code them, right? So they will uh, be happy to share that content. And once the influencer shares your content, because you mentioned him in his article, his uh, followers will also be able to see that. So once again, this kind of a contract uh, content at, uh, attracts a lot of shares and lots of uh, backlinks. So this is again covered in detail in the in the in the <clears throat> influencer marketing class. Okay. So uh, uh, I'm just summarizing some of those uh, things here. You can uh, quote and mention uh, an influencer in an article. Or you can ask somebody for a contributor quote, uh, you know, or include them in an expert roundup. Okay, uh, what is an expert roundup? Who can tell me that? So let's search for uh, link building, or let's search for expert roundup. Right. So let's do this in title. Roundup. <clears throat> now that's something else. So uh, let's do this. In URL, expert roundup. Okay. Um, we do have examples here, but Let's type in some topic as well. So in URL expert roundup, let's call, let's search for uh, marriage. Just some random keyword. Let us, so, uh, <clears throat> okay, maybe we'll not pick the first one. Let's do something else. Uh, let's, let, let's pick up this one. Or maybe this one, healthy habits of successful leaders. Let's pick that up. So an expert roundup is basically a type of a post where 
you create a question okay you come up with a question and then you ask this question to famous people in that industry okay and what then happens is uh, each one of those people answers that question and you post it right here so for example uh, what is this article happy healthy habits of successful leaders and expert roundup okay so what was the question here okay so I asked each of these leaders a single question the question was what healthy habits do you attribute to your success as a leader okay let's zoom in so this is uh, one of the uh, this is a question that the person asked and, and he asked this question to a lot of people Michael Hayat for example or Tom Ziegler Mark Tim and all of them tried to answer this question what healthy habits do you attribute to uh, your success as a leader right so they the, he, he mentioned all these uh, guys over here his next step would be he would uh, you know once this article is published he would have shared this article with all of these people saying that you know what the article is now live and uh, we just mentioned you uh, uh, your quote has been published in this article so all of these guys they're all influencers right Michael Hayat Tom Ziegler Mark Tim you know Dan Miller uh, Michael Levitt these are all big names these are all uh, top level influencers so if these people shared this article because their names were mentioned in this uh, this article would have uh, gotten a lot of shares and a lot of uh, you know traffic just because of this okay so this is the benefit of creating an influencer uh, uh, you know based content and expert roundup is is this format where you have a question and you ask this question to experts and then you collect all their responses and post it like this it's a very easy way to create content as well doesn't require a lot of effort you just have to uh, come up with a question ask this question to people wait for the responses and then just write an introduction and a, and a, and a conclusion and that's it you have got a wonderful article that is capable of uh, drawing in a lot of uh, you know shares all right make sense to people <clears throat> so now you know what an influencer uh, roundup is right expert roundup not an influencer roundup, but an expert roundup all right <clears throat> let's go up you can invite them to a guest post you can uh, you know uh, invite them for an interview and uh, you know uh, take them for an interview this kind of content works very well and to say is it's interesting it is it, it, it works very very well you know you get tons of exposure with this so these are like you know these are like you know marketing gems that will help you uh, uh, you know basically uh, do better than the rest of the competition because a lot of people are not doing this if you can do all of it you'll get you'll get much better than them no doubt about it okay guest blogging is yet another uh, you know way in which you can uh, uh, take a make a make make a benefit of your uh, you know of your content uh, now guest blogging how to do guest blogging that has been covered in depth in your SEO class uh, so you know you basically uh, you know uh, kind of uh, what is this thing doing over here so you basically uh, uh, you know uh, contribute articles on other websites and uh, that not only gives you a backlink but also sends you a lot of traffic to your website so there are many benefits of guest blogging. How you uh, how you manage to guest blog? This is something I've uh, not 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 me, but uh, you you learn in your uh, SEO class. I think most of you have done it already. So uh, guest blogging. Uh, I've just just uh, uh, you have explained the benefits of guest blogging right here. Okay. So here are two bloggers, blogger A and blogger B. Okay. Blogger A writes two articles. Okay. And uh, at the end of it, what he ha and he posts them on his own website. Okay. So at the end of it, the uh, what he has he ends up with having uh, two pieces of content with no links on them and uh, absolutely no friends now this blogger B is a little smart what he does is he writes uh, you know uh, two articles okay but he posts only one on his website he is posting just just this article on the website the other website he uh, uses as a guest blog and he posts it on a different website okay and then he also invites other people to write on his website so he invites people for uh, writing guest blogs so what does he get he get one content which is published on his website plus another content which was contributed by somebody else and one article which was published on a third party website but has a link from there okay so this content also indirectly links to his own website so he ends up so he also wrote the same number of blogs as this guy but this guy is boring he's a traditional uh, content marketer uh, you know uh, or a content writer or a marketer whatever he just got two blogs he wrote them published on his website and he thinks his job is done what does this guy get he gets three pieces of content he gets one backlink to his content and he makes two friends with whom who will be collaborating in the future to to create and get even more uh, content and backlinks now this thing can be scaled up this thing can be repeated over and over again so next scenario this guy writes four articles okay again publishes them all on his website so he get four pieces of content zero links zero friends now this guy 
Okay, I made a mistake here. This number is wrong. So uh, four articles. Uh, uh, he wrote four articles as well. Uh, but uh, sorry, he wrote uh, yeah four articles. But two of them were published on uh, other websites. So he gets uh, two backlinks from there, and two articles were contributed by other people. So effectively, he got six articles, and uh, you know two links. In fact, this is wrong. So six articles, two links, and four friends now. Okay. Again, scale this up even more and you see where, we are, where I'm going with this, right? So if you are, uh, you know, uh, writing or creating content, but focusing on distributing half of them on other websites, you are, you are getting actually more content benefits, you're getting more backlinks. And uh, if you're also inviting other people to write on your website as collaborators, uh, you're getting more content and you're doing much, much, much better than any, anybody else. So this guy A ends up creating a decent blog, you know, this, oops, come on. He ends up creating a blog, which is okay, but you know, that's not great. This second guy's blog looks much better because it's getting a lot of backlinks. It's getting lots of contributions and uh, it's much more fresh. It has, uh, and it, it gives B a much more flexibility. He's able to leverage uh, his content in, in a much, much, much more better way. Right. So again, uh, hopefully this part is clear. All of you are okay with this up to this point. Because now we are going to sum everything else up and uh, we'll wrap up the session after that. All right. So here's the fun part. Here's the interesting part. Okay. Trust me, this is a strategy that can change your entire, uh, you know, uh, life as a marketer. And I'm making this bold, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a statement, but I, I fully stand behind this. And this is probably one of the best things that you can incorporate in your marketing. So whatever, whatever we have learned today, we're going to just, uh, you know, uh, tie it all up and uh, we'll be using it to drive leads, drive rankings, drive traffic, drive site authority, uh, rank for some uh, tough keywords and do all that, all that wonderful stuff. Okay. So a quick recap, what have we done so far? Okay. We have uh, uh, looked at topics. So those are the what, what do I write about? Topics are what do I write about? We looked at different formats. How do I publish this content? Okay. Uh, collaborators, these are like who are the people uh, for whom I'm writing for, right? Or who are the people writing for me, okay? And host blogs is like, where am I posting my content? So these are the four things that, uh, you know, uh, that we discussed, topics, formats, collaborators, and host blogs. And now we'll use all of them, we'll combine them together into a strategy that will, that will, that will simply, uh, you know, uh, uh, work miracles for your business, okay? So let's review the problem that we faced initially, right? So we had two different types of visitors on the website. Okay, uh, people who wanted uh, information on products or service. So the red ones are the, are the ones you want. These are the hot leads, right? These are hot uh, leads. And these are the people who are looking for products and services. And uh, they are the ones who will convert faster. Uh, and then they are, these are these cold leads who are basically looking for information. They just want answers. What is this? How to do this? Okay. Uh, and accordingly, uh, the you know, same number of phrases are being used on your website. So these are some are like research related tangent phrases. Some are buyer related, very targeted phrases. Okay. So we have already identified the problem. We know this is what we faced earlier on. I said initially, most people come to your blog, but they do not convert. All right, let's move ahead. Uh, and similarly, you have uh, two different types of pages as well. You've got all those red hot pages. These are your marketing pages. This is where the sale happens. So home, product pages, pricing pages, all those things. And, the, and there's a blog page. Of course, blog page is important because it helps uh, because the blog pages are responsible for improving the authority of your uh, marketing pages. Okay. People do not link to ma marketing pages. Other sites, uh, they link to blog pages. So blog pages are what, uh, you know, will get the backlinks, not the marketing pages. And based on that, you have two types of uh, content on your site. Uh, blog related uh, stuff is, uh, uh, you know, really, uh, responsible for generating awareness. While this is the one, uh, uh, you know, uh, responsible for generating action. This is a very, very simplified version of the marketing funnel that we talk about in the digital marketing class. Okay. Your goal is to make sure that people who are uh, coming into entering your funnel uh, in the awareness mode can actually go ahead and take action as well. This is the problem we faced initially. And uh, this is what we want to solve with our content. Okay. So look at this. Now, uh, like I said, I was working for such a long time that I kind of lost, uh, you know, uh, kind, of, kind of ran out of time and I could not uh, put the notes in here. So uh, let me show you what I mean here. So this is the strategy which I created. Okay. No, not this. This is a blank strategy. This is a strategy which I created. And uh, this is what I'll explain to you in just a second. Okay. So <clears throat> here's my, here's my, uh, my, my problem or here's my, uh, 
you know just just ignore everything else below it let's start from the from the from the top one here's my main uh, goal okay i have a marketing website i'm working on a marketing website of course and i want to rank for digital marketing services okay i hope you all agree that this is a very very competitive keyword right the competition for this keyword will be very very high all of you agree digital marketing services all right in fact uh, if you want to measure the measure how competitive a keyword can be Ahrefs is again a really good tool for that. I can go to a keyword explorer right here and I can uh, search for a keyword. So uh, paste the keyword. Okay, not this, not this, sorry. Uh, go back to Ahrefs or have they changed it? Okay, look, looks like they've changed it. Uh, it says uh, go to the old inter interface. Uh, I think this still works. Search for it. Click on search. Yeah, still works. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, to my surprise, it says that uh, the keyword intensity uh, difficulty is not that hard. 19 is still difficult. <clears throat> Excuse me, but not that difficult. However, let me try India. I think uh, my target country is going to be India, of course. This actually comes as a surprise that in the United States, digital marketing services is not a very competitive keyword. In India also, it's 19, so uh, kind of kind of a surprise, but uh, that's okay. It's still competitive. You know, it's it's not that easy. Okay. 19 and the website which I'm working on this growth.com it's it's absolutely new no authority at all right this growth.com in fact it's not even available to people I can see this website uh, because I'm working on this right now uh, but, but it's not open to you guys you'll probably see a, a coming soon page but this is the you know kind of uh, content I'm writing now this is a perfectly new website with absolutely uh, I mean right now it's not even live so zero authority once it gets live, it will be like, you know, the site will have like probably an authority of one or so out of 100, one. That's like extremely poor. So for me trying to rank for uh, something like uh, digital marketing services or digital marketing company, let's try company. Now that's much more harder, right? So this is again one of the keywords. It will be much hard for me or digital marketing expert, try that. I think even that will be hard. Okay, not that much. <clears throat> okay, this is promising. You know, I'm feeling happy with this. I, I'll probably take a shot at it. But anyway, even though my, uh, you know, uh, website has uh, absolutely no authority and the keywords are still relatively tough, it's not easy, it's still medium. Uh, I, it's going to be difficult for me to rank. It's, it's obvious, right? But does that mean I'm going to give up? No, I'm not. I have a strategy here, which is what I'm going to share with you now. Okay, so this is a strategy. Let me uh, expand this. And I think the next is this one. Okay, so, <clears throat> so how do I do this? So this is my page on, uh, come on, expand this. So this is my page on digital marketing uh, services, for example, okay? I want to rank this page, okay? But it will be very difficult for me to rank this page because for all the obvious reasons, right? I just explained that. So instead of trying to rank for this page, the way I do is, again, please pay attention. This is, this is going to be fun. I'll first create a research-based article like the one I talked about, okay? A high-quality, in-depth, research-based article because I know that the... Uh, that the eco that the keyword which I'm targeting is extremely tough. So I'll, I'll go about it like this. I'll first uh, cover, you know, once the site is live, I'll uh, do my research. I'll find some topic on digital marketing, and I'll do a in-depth, high-quality research on this and uh, promote an art and create an article which will link to my uh, to my primary page. So this is a page uh, which where I offer digital marketing services. Okay, and I want uh, this page to rank. But before this, I want uh, I'll create this article. Okay, so what I'll, I can do here is. I'll create an article here. I can probably do a, a research, uh, sorry, a survey for this to create an article. And I'll create an article uh, on possible example is 10 curious habits of successful content marketers. Okay, I can, uh, I can, uh, I won't need the observation or the aggregation method for this. I can use the survey method for this, right? I'll use survey, I'll reach out to bloggers, famous internet marketers, and I'll ask them uh, some questions to figure out what are the 10 curious habits of successful content marketers, create an original research quantity, you know, uh, I'll, I'll add some charts to it, I'll add some graphs to it, quotes from influencers, all those things, everything that I talked about today, right? Influencers, graphs, charts, intro, uh, you know, all that stuff I'll include in this original research and that research will link to this particular article, all right? What's the next step? Then. I will create a, you know, a guide out of this. So this is, oops, come on. I'll create a guide out of this, okay? So the next is, I'll just upgrade the content. We talked about content, uh, uh, you know, repurposing, right? So I'll create a, a guide out of this. Maybe this guide can be called, uh, you know, 
a complete guide to top 10 habits of successful content marketers. Okay, this will be a gated content. Uh, gated content means that it will be in the form of an ebook and uh, for people to download it they will have to enter their email information this is why you have this uh, email sig uh, sign over here so I'll, I'll create this content on my website where I can offer this content to people uh, this will be in the form of an ebook and people can download that ebook but for that they have to enter their email address so for uh, I'm also building leads uh, using this method so I'm, I'm like you know kind of killing two birds with the same stone over here okay so generating leads Plus that will link to this uh, this article over here, which is going to link to this one. So I'm slowly trying to increase the authority of this page now. Okay, you 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 know this for a fact that the more links come into a page, the more authority uh, increases, right? And it doesn't matter whether whether it's an internal link or an external link. Any link coming into a page will uh, carry some authority with it, and the authority of this page will go up. Okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? I'll then create a how-to article. Okay how to become a more successful content marketer for example okay and this I'll create over here and again link it to this primary article over here so so see what where I'm going with this 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 these two articles link to this increasing the overall authority these are also related uh, uh, you know articles over here and eventually all of these links are pointing towards my uh, main main money page you know the, the services page okay what's the next step uh, <clears throat> how to become a successful content marketer you know a lot of times you can create uh, an exact opposite of the same content you can very quickly turn this content into its negative version by doing something opposite like why do some content marketers fail or top 10 reasons why why content marketers fail okay uh, or in, you know some let's make this most to generate even more uh, you know interest so uh, let me just <clears throat> do it like this so that it's clear that this is an article topic so why do most content marketers fail okay now this is going to be an external content right this will this is a guest post content which I will publish on a high domain authority website now how to do this this has already been covered in your SEO class and I'm, I'm sure you guys must have uh, gone through this so why do most content marketers fail this is like an exact opposite of this one it's very easy to create a content like this but that will get posted on uh, a third-party website so the yellow here donates uh, donates a third-party website so this content will be posted on a third-party website and that will link to this content okay again you see the link uh, you must have heard about link juice the link juice is flowing towards this page now so slowly and certainly all these pages are linking together and from every direction the link juice is flowing here so it starts here goes here from here it goes all the way down here right so I'm, I'm directing my all my link juice all my authority towards this main page over here okay what's next I'll create an infographic from the research so this research which I created I'll use this to now convert it into an infographic again repurposing the content okay and this is what I get okay so repurpose the content and this is what I get over here again this is going to be linked to this one and again all these uh, blue articles or green articles that are published on my website so this is again linking here and then again the link juice is following uh, over here now the, the chances are that this infographic will attract other backlinks as well and all those backlinks will also pass on the authority eventually to this page okay that's infographic next I'll do a guestographic right I'll create another version of the infographic but this time it will be meant for some other website so I'll publish it on some other uh, high, high DA website so again this yellow is uh, yellow color is for other websites so I'll create another infographics maybe a another version of this and I'll publish it on some other website as a guest infographic it's also called as a guestographic and that will link back to my original high quality research content because these two research pieces these two infographics sorry have been uh, derived from this original research uh, piece here and that is why this thing looks the biggest of them all because this is the most high quality content that I have on the site but again you see link juice flowing here link juice flowing here link juice coming from here to here link juice coming from here to here this page is now slowly and certainly gaining in authority next up influencer interview I can invite somebody to uh, you know uh, interview on my website and that will be posted again here okay this will link back to this again okay so I can publish a influencer uh, you know uh, podcast on my website that was a question but sir all blogs, blogs with high uh, DA charge money no they do not Tarun uh, I'm not sure if you covered if you if you if you uh, went to the class on uh, SEO where I did show you how you can get high DA uh, links without any money. It takes effort, but it, it works. 
right? Uh, you can you just have to uh, you know uh, use tools like uh, the Moz tool to uh, basically figure out high DA. You know what? Let's talk about this later. Let's 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 talk about the process first. But yeah, it's I mean uh, at ProProps, majority of our high DA links came from uh, such websites where we did not have to pay. Okay, so it's it's possible. So this is a podcast now, which is again linking back to uh, <clears throat> you know uh, this this high DA, high high quality uh, research article. Uh, okay, let's go back. Actually, next thing contribution interview or a podcast now I could do the opposite again I can uh, appear as a guest podcaster on some other website or I can uh, uh, interview uh, I can offer myself an interview on some other website now interviewing uh, somebody asking you to int uh, have an interview on another website can be a little uh, difficult so you can instead focus on having a podcast okay so uh, there are a lot of sites which offer podcast is the, the you know the, there's the iTunes podcast there is there's tons of them you can you can podcast on all of those sites and those podcasts will again be linking back to your websites so again link juice further coming down over here and and you just repeat the process right write more blog posts which should start linking to this one write even more blog posts some of which link here some of which link directly to this one and so on and so forth so start creating content like this and eventually you have a uh, something that looks like this now this is just my example but at the core what I'm doing here is I am creating all the different formats which I talked about on all the different topics I talked about so different topics different formats created that content I'm using making use of influencers I'm making use of uh, you know all this just go back for a second topics formats collaborators and host blogs right guest blogs I'm making use of all of them to create this particular structure now this is unique to me you can come up with your own structure but you can see that eventually there's a tons of good high quality content everywhere some coming from high DA websites some coming from normal DA websites some coming from your own article your own websites but all of them are actually linking back to this site and this drastically improves the authority of this website and trust me if you can do this if you can repeat this if you can scale this uh, you know the keyword difficulty 13 I would be able to nail this in a couple of uh, months for sure right so I hope you guys get the idea you see uh, what we're trying to do over here <clears throat> okay so uh, this is uh, makes sense I, I hope it makes more than just sense because this is this is some brilliant stuff you know this is something that can actually change uh, the way you work as a marketer so uh, this does two things you know it not only uh, helps you generate lots of uh, high quality authority for a website it basically also uh, you know stops you from doing all that nonsensical stuff that doesn't work you know all those uh, you know article submissions and bookmark submissions and you know blog comments and all that all that really use use the stuff you know none of that works social bookmarking come on focus on the real good stuff you know yeah, put in some other stuff like you know uh, answering questions on Quora for example and then linking back from there think of all the high quality stuff that you can do and direct all of the link juice towards your main page and trust me uh, it just takes uh, time, but any any high quality keyword can be uh, you know uh, can be can be uh, can be nailed with this particular strategy. Okay, this <clears throat> this is this is something that has worked wonders for us. We have like I said, you know, 16 million visitors a month. Uh, that's something because of this strategy. Uh, you know, and we grew very very fast ever since I implemented this uh, strategy. And hopefully that's what I'm going to do for uh, me now and, and, and hopefully for you guys as well, right? You guys should do the same thing. Uh, that was a long comment. This session today was probably the most value-packed session through the entire course. I, I feel so too, uh, Tarun, you know, because uh, make it the, making it the absolute best session that I could on uh, improving your marketing. So I put in all the practical stuff that we do. This is, this is what, uh, you know, uh, works for us and this is what will work for you guys. I think this is the end, right? Uh, again, uh, this kind of sums, sums up every single uh, content piece uh, that you guys can work on. Uh, this, this, this is not the only way you can you can manipulate it. You can change it in any way you want. You can uh, make uh, turn this around into a, into a, into format that you like. Uh, but uh, again, it's, it, it's all creative. You know, it, it's open to uh, it's open to you guys. Now that's it. That wraps up the session. Uh, thank you for this. But, uh, when I started the session, I started getting thrilled as well because I was, I was kind of reliving the things that I have been doing, things that have been helping me rank. And uh, so that this this was a very exciting session for me. You could probably feel that in my voice. Uh, and because of the enthusiasm, maybe I spoke a little fast at some uh, points. So uh, my apologies for that. 
but uh, you guys will have the recording of this session and uh, you guys can uh, watch it as many times as you want right so uh, that wraps it up uh,